Hey there, Xano community. I'm Izzy, a developer here on the engineering team at Xano, and I'm excited to go over one of our newest features that's going to make search and analytics more low code friendly. We've expanded our AWS open search function stack to include the query wizard and document manager, allowing you to easily integrate the search capabilities of open search into your Xano application. In this video, I'm going to cover the basics of open search when to choose open search over a regular database and how to connect and use the new query wizard in Xano. So what is open search? Open search is an open source suite of search and analytics tools that allows you to apply natural language processing, text analyzers, and built in machine learning to quickly return the most relevant data. This makes it a great tool for log analytics, application monitoring, and website searches. The architecture is very similar to a database. In a database, think of your table with a schema where you put records. In OpenSearch, you have an index with a mapping where you put documents. So why would I choose OpenSearch over a database? Database queries are fairly binary. Records either match or they don't. It can be kind of limiting on text field searches. So OpenSearch offers text analysis and natural language processing, and it computes a relevancy score. This is how well a document matches the criteria. That's where it really stands apart from a database. I'm not gonna go into the technical details of setting up a service for open search on AWS, but there are great resources out there to get you started. For now, I'll assume you have a domain with data indexed and ready to go, and you wanna integrate it into Xano. Okay. So here we have our Xano dev domain under the Amazon open search service. I'm showing you this so you can see where to grab your domain endpoint from. You're going to use the IPv4. Go ahead and copy this. And I'd recommend setting it up as an environment variable in your workspace. This will make it really easy to use throughout your APIs. I'd also recommend probably setting up your credentials under environment variables as well. So. Now I'm just going to quickly show you that I have my movies index with a couple of sample movies in here using the Amazon sample data. And that's what I'm going to be using in our demo today to search. So I have a new endpoint here in Xano, and I'm going to go ahead and add a new function stack. We're going to look under cloud services, Amazon open search. You'll see we have three options here. Open search request is if you know the exact endpoint and payload that you want to send. Document is if you want a little simpler way to add or read or update or delete documents from an index. And search query is what we're going to be focusing on today. Let's go ahead and add that to our function stack. And you'll see we have the configure panel and the query panel. On the configure side, we have auth type. We have two options here, IAM or using the internal user database in OpenSearch. We'll select master if that's the case. This is all dependent on how you have configured your service in AWS. So I've configured mine using basic auth, so I'll select master. For key ID, I'm going to use my OpenSearch username. And for access key, I'm going to set my OpenSearch password. And those would just be the key ID and access key if you're using IAM. The region is required if you're using IAM, but it's not necessary if you're just using master. So I'll skip that. The base URL, I showed you where the, to find that before. I'm going to go ahead and add that in here. And then the index. Today, I'm going to be using movies. Lastly is the return type. So start with the two options. We have search and count. With search, you get all of the results back. With count, you just get the number of results that match. So let's start with a count query just to keep things simple to start. So over here, we have two sections. We have the query wizard and the payload. This payload is automatically going to get generated based on what we put into the query wizard. So let's go ahead and use that. You'll find that this interface is pretty similar to what we use when searching uh, on a database. So we will set our field. In this case, I'm going to search for title, set our operator. 
going to search for a contain. Then I'm going to do Despicable Me. You could add as many criteria as you would like. Then just remember to hit the Update Payload button to make sure that the query wizard updates in here. So this here is OpenSearch's query DSL. It's a JSON payload that OpenSearch uses to perform its searches. So I'm going to go ahead and save this, go and run and debug, and you'll see we get back count of seven. So seven movies matched our title, Despicable Me, or it contained some term in that string. So let's go ahead and change this to a search. And you'll notice that the query panel has updated to include the output section. This allows you to customize the responses a little more. Size is the number of results that we want to return. So there's only seven. I'm not going to limit that, but it can help with efficiency of your results. From is the offset, so it's great for pagination, same with size. And then included fields, let's just return the title, the rating, and the plot. So you can enter this as a comma separated string, or you can use a JSON array. And then the sort is going to use the relevant score. An open search will calculate that. So I'm going to leave it as default for now, and we'll come back and see how we can change that later. You'll see that our payload has updated to include source. That is the query DSL equivalent of included fields. And I'm going to go ahead and save that. Now let me run this again. And we actually get our results back. You'll see we also have some metadata on how long it took to perform the query, as well as the hits, the number of hits. And now each hit has the index that it was found in, so in this case, movies, the ID of the record or document, and then the score. This is the relevant score that's been computed. So the highest relevant score was 10.5. And it was for Despicable Me. And see, we have Despicable Me 2 as well. Slightly lower score because it's not an exact match. Then if we scroll a little further, we'll see we have Let Me In, which does not contain the word Despicable, but it does contain the word Me. So that's how OpenSearch is doing its term searches. It's matching anything in that string separated by a space. So basically a word. Uh, and you can see that other titles come back if they have just me in, in the title. Let's go ahead and switch this up a little more. I want to show you that these queries can be dynamic. So I'm going to use my input query so that if a user wanted to use this API that I've made, they could search using whatever input they have in mind. You'll notice it updates the payload. Uh, and this is using Xano expression syntax. So we're escaping it with parentheses, and this will get evaluated whenever the request is set. Go ahead and save that. And let's change up our search a little so you can see how it works. Do the next title, Let Me In. So here we have Let Me In is the first result, highest score of 12. And then same as before, you can see that more results are coming in, even though they just have one matching token in me. This one has in as well. Last thing I want to show you is how to sort these results not using the relevance score. Let's say we want to choose it based on rating. We can choose ascending or descending. So I'm going to start with the highest rated at the top. Go ahead and save that. Let's change up our query. Let's change it so it's star. We run this again. We'll see highest scoring is 8.8 .8 and it's Star Wars. And we see Star Wars is in a lot of these results. Star Trek is also in there, not quite as high as Star Wars, but this just goes to show you how these documents are getting searched using OpenSearch's search engine matching these terms, 
and how easy it is to really make these queries dynamic. So let's add even more filters in here. Let's say, and rating is less than less than 7.5. See if we get anything back. You'll see it updates and adds a range element and it's filtering. So there you have it. I hope this has been helpful and you can now utilize open search in your Xano applications. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to our support team. They'll do an awesome job of answering your question. And if you want to reference back, you can always visit this video or we have the Xano documentation where you can find a lot of this information as well. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.